Good morning. Before the pandemic, we had this really nice thing going where faculty members were sharing pictures of themselves when they were young. Uh, and so I thought in the spirit of honoring that, I would start with one myself today. All right, yeah. Now, there, there are a couple obvious reasons for sharing this, all right? The first is to prove that there was a point in which I did have hair. Uh, actually, Tabor Wilson last night came in to check in and was going crazy because he'd come across an old yearbook seeing me with hair and just couldn't, like, couldn't wrap his brain around that. And so, Tabor, here's a second proof for you, all right? Uh, but it's also the perfect picture to share because, oh, well, well, you guys, you beat me to the punch a little bit, but that's all right. So, uh, the, uh, there's an obvious reason to share this, right? And my story involves the Easter Bunny, all right? I know what a lot of people in, in my generation would have been thinking before we shared this, was, which was like, hey, at least it was with an inflatable bunny. At least your parents didn't dress you up in some god-awful 70s and 80s children's clothes and make you stand next to a terrifying <laughs> giant creature <laughs> and then take comfortable pictures next to it, right? But this was kind of standard fare, to be honest, back in, the, back in the day, all right? And most of the adults in the room right now have a picture or two that look just like this. Okay, uh, if you haven't, if you're not close enough, you really gotta check out that bit at some point. That's an orange shirt underneath like uh, some sort of weird, um, I don't even know really what to call it, some sort of plaid overalls, okay? Uh, clearly I had a complicated relationship with the Easter Bunny from a very early age. <laughs> In this picture I'm about Cal Water's age, right? If you're trying to be about four years old. Uh, but the story I'm actually thinking of, it comes from a couple years later when I was six. Uh, and, and at six, I was, I was four years older than my younger sister, and we had an Easter egg hunt, uh, and I'd crushed her in it and was feeling really good about that, all right? And in the way that you do when you're, when you're about that age and, and you can take advantage of a, of a younger child. Uh, but I wasn't, I wasn't, all right, I wasn't uh, just a good Easter egg finder. I also thought I knew something about the world, so I called my dad over. I kind of brought him in like this, and I said, Dad, I know there's no such thing as the Easter Bunny. And that was a, a moment that I don't think my dad was ready for in that part of my life, right? That's, you know, I think he was hoping maybe to, to, to hold off on that conversation. And so he tells me now that he paused for a second and he took his time, was trying to think of what to say, uh, but I followed it up quickly with, uh, there's no way a magic bunny could ever do that, Dad. Bunnies aren't big enough and they don't have hands to carry the basket. I know it's just a guy who dresses up like that and runs around the world and puts all these eggs in everyone's house. And my dad kind of just nodded, was like, yeah, okay, good. Yep, you got it, John. <laughs> right. Yeah, I definitely had it all figured out. But there's a lesson there that's central to my thought of the week for you. All right, and sometimes people are so skilled at doing what they're doing that we don't even notice what they're doing for us. We live and go to a school where this kind of dynamic happens all the time. All right, and we're the beneficiaries of this incredible dedication and excellence. Brooks is an amazing place. All right, it's got a gorgeous campus, all right, a wonderful location, but even more so because of the people. All right? There are so many skillful people here and who put in amazing work behind the scenes that we don't always notice. People walk around this campus and talk about how beautiful it is, but they don't always see the work that people like Mr. St. Cyr and Mr. Sifflin have put into it for decades. All right? When you all are feeling sick in the middle of the night and you walk down to the health center, the nurses provide amazing care. But they are there sleeping overnight and just hoping that they can help you, right? They're taking time off from their families, right? They're waiting to be able to help you should you need it, right? The activities you enjoy on the weekend, someone plans those. The facilities that we all use every day, somebody cleans those. Somebody keeps them going, all right? During the school day, you walk out of an amazing class discussion, right? Or a lab, right? Or a really thoughtful feedback from your teacher. But we don't always see the amount of time and energy that goes into that. Right? It's not just adults doing that either, it's all of you doing it for each other. The amount of practice that goes into recitals, right? We, we heard a, a wonderful singing the other day, right? It's, it's early in the year, the amount of practice that goes into making something like that possible, or peer tutors, right? Or just a, an upperclassman who helps a younger kid, right? All of that is sort of below the surface, but it's really, really important. All right, even just behind me, we have a world-class organist in Mr. Humphreyville who, who sits back there. You almost never get to see his face, but he sits back there and provides amazing music for us every single time. Over and over and over it happens, and there's so many more examples than I could even share with you today. All right, and that's great. You should not feel guilty about that. That's why we're here, that's why you came, and honestly, it's why the adults do what we do. Right? We care a ton. But sometimes some of the folks I'm talking about are so good at it 
that if you're not really paying attention, you might not realize what they've done. Right? Uh, and because of that, we're not always inclined to appreciate it or be as grateful as we might otherwise. All right? um, you know, I'll give you an example. Right? You leave the, you're in the dorm eating pizza and you leave the box on the table. Someone else will pick that up, right? right? Unfortunately, we get careless. It happens more than it should. Take this table, for example, that I walked by on Thursday afternoon. I, I think we'd all acknowledge, right? That's not, you know, it's not like that all the time, but it's not uncommon. I'd like to think it was a mistake and that the students at this table just kind of overlooked it. Uh, except in this particular corner of the dining hall last week, there was a table like this every single time I walked by. All right, I'll be honest, that bums me out. And before the seniors sort of start thinking, all right, that's where the young kids are, yeah, that might be true, but it happens at the other end of the dining hall too. Right? Uh, the thing is, it's always gone by the next day. But guess what? Somebody had to pick it up. Right? Somebody took that time. Often it's our dining hall team. Right? The people who are spending their time planning and then making our food, preparing it, serving it, and then planning for the next day. We can do better than this. We have to do better than this. Right? Ideally, it means not leaving in the first place, but it also means being aware enough that if you walk by it, you just help out. Right? That's kind of what we do here. You see something and you fix it. This is not a long lecture and I'm not here to say that, that, that I think this was intentional. I'm just saying that we can do better. All right, the next time you leave a table, give it a second look. The next time you want to cut across some new grass, right, or cut through the construction because it's just easier, pause for a second, right? Ask yourself, right, am I making someone else's job harder right now? If the answer to that's yes, do something better. Mr. Dan Rourke was the athletic director at Brooks when I was hired, and he was really the first person who taught me about boarding schools. Very early on, he told me that boarding school is the kind of place where you'll see whatever you decide to look for. That's as true for adults as it is for kids. When you want to find something that annoys you or frustrates you, believe me, you will find it. When you want to find something that inspires you, see something amazing and positive that lifts you up, that has you feeling like and seeing kind of the best we can be, you're going to find that too. You have some choice in that. You get to choose how you're going to, how you're going to perceive what's going on around you. So sure, some students left some stuff behind, but dozens walked by it. No one should have to clean up for us. All right, our school and facility should be actively used and engaged in. Dive in. Throw yourself into this place. And when you do, remember the Vietnamese proverb, when eating fruit, remember the one who planted the tree. My challenge to you all this year, this week, today, as soon as you can, is to catch as many of these moments as you can. Once you start looking, you're going to be amazed at what's going on around you. You'll notice someone going above and beyond, so say something to them. Say something to someone else about it. Spread the gratitude and joy. At the very least, let's make sure we're not making someone's job harder. We're not talking about huge moments or grand gestures, right? It's kind of like compound interest, right? It's not about the size of the initial deposit, right? It's how that builds over time, right? And by doing this over and over and over, right, you have a chance to, to magnify and amplify this spirit. You do your part, and that lightens the load for someone else who just does it for somebody else, and we pass that along to each other. These are simple, single acts. Start small. Like most things, the more often you do it, the better you'll get. And then do it alongside other people. Do it with your dorm. Do it with your teams. Do it with the table at, di at the dining hall. Community is an action. It doesn't happen because we tell each other we have a community. It's actively built through the cumulative addition of these tens of thousands of moments, right? These moments of kindness, moments of gratitude, moments of courage, moments where we care for each other and for this place. It's all these little moments where we have a chance to leave things and people better than we found them. This is a learned skill. It's not something that happens naturally. You start on a small scale, you get better, and then you just do it some more. It's easy to fall into the trap of privilege and entitlement and think that you deserve this or expect it, right, or that it just sort of happens magically, but it doesn't. My recommendation is to get something that triggers you, that makes you remember it. Mine is this bracelet. Ask me about it sometime. All right? For more than six years, I've had it on my wrist, and it helps me think about a family that, that I'm awful grateful for having in my life. I think many of you know this is my last year at Brooks. After 19 terrific years, I'm leaving at the end of the year to go be the head of the school at the Holderness School up in New Hampshire. It's an incredibly exciting opportunity, but it's hard too. It's hard to think about leaving this place and this, this group of people who have meant so much to me and so much to my family. Uh, in some ways, I feel a little bit like a senior who's looking around and knowing that my, talk, my clock is ticking a little bit, right? That I'm gonna have this series of lasts all throughout the year. So my plan is to follow my own advice and to soak it up. But while I'm doing that, my goal for myself is to use this kind of lens that I'm talking about on everything. 
to be grateful for the moments and to do my part to chip in. And to do it remembering that the idea that the highest form of appreciation is not to utter words, but to live by them. I'm also planning on being a collector of these moments. So I challenge all of you, especially our seniors, to lead the way. Today is the first half of my, speech at, of my final speech at Brooks. The second half is going to come in the spring. My plan is to share what I've witnessed all throughout the year. So I'm going to be looking. I ask you to look and share with me too. All right? And when I stand up here in May, I'm hoping I have too many great examples of this than I can count. There are a few phrases I hate more than ignorance is bliss. That is such a cop-out. That's a total excuse to disengage from things, all right? Uh, true joy comes from intentional appreciation. It comes from gratitude. It comes from engaging fully in what's around you. So let's actively resist that blissful ignorance. In a funny way, I was right way back when in that ridiculous picture, right? It's not magic. It's about people, right? People who put in hard work and their time and their effort and their care for all of you. Let's honor them by doing our part, by celebrating everybody who goes above and beyond, and by planting some fruit trees for others. We're a community that leaves things and people better than we found them. We take care of this place, and we take care of each other. Remind yourself. Remind the people around you. And then let's get busy building it together. Thanks. Thank you.